imagine a world in which world-changing thoughts, thoughts that are liberating, that are transformative, that might be concealed in fertile minds like yours and could stay there forever, that would be made visible and shared more widely with others, with everyone. Imagine a world in which interesting pieces of knowledge that are quite relevant to, to the general public, um, but that, that are stuck in research labs or in the minds of uh, astrophysicians or of great AI scientists, would suddenly be made accessible and would be debated and discussed with more people, in, with, in, more inclusively. People would feel more um, involved, connected, empowered, and informed. The kind of sharing of ideas that we, we have seen earlier with the other speakers, this kind of sharing of ideas I'm talking about is known as thought leadership. What is thought leadership? Thought leadership is the name of the game today. In the past, it used to be the privilege of a few people who naturally enjoyed an audience, like politicians, uh, journalists, or uh, cultural leaders. But in today's digital era, things are very different. Everyone with some education and uh, powerful minds, powerful thinking, could become a thought leader. Thought leadership is a combination of knowledge that you might have acquired throughout your career and uh, an original point of view and also the skills to share it with others, the, the capacity to convey your message. So if you have the knowledge and a point of view, what is holding you back from being a thought leader? And maybe this speech is for you. In the past, thought leader used to be revolutionaries or liberators like uh, Gandhi or Mandela, whose powerful action, whose political action and, and powerful thinking made them come to the forefront and, and, and uh, make the world better and, and overcome long-standing injustice, for instance. But in today's world, many more could become thought leaders. We have very influential people in today's world, among the, the sports stars who influence us every day, and the, among uh, the show business stars as well, and also among the in the business sector, like Elon Musk and uh, Bill Gates are powerful influencers to, in today's world. But we also have people influencing us among the advocates for the most urgent issues that matter to us, like the climate, like Greta Thunberg, for instance, on climate. And, uh, and But we also have thought leaders among our acquaintances, our colleagues, our, the entrepreneurs we know who on LinkedIn post every day their morning inspiration, for instance, or the, the issues that matter to them most. Maybe you do this on a regular basis. You comment on the news about the issues that matter most for you. So, how do we become thought leaders? The, the point is that you have everything to uh, gain from being a thought leader yourself and very little to lose. I will try to convince you of that. Actually, in today's world, there are so many people advocating for so many things. There are interest groups, there are people advocating for their ideas, causes, uh, their own interests. And, and actually what happens is that the most vocal among us are those who get their own causes at the top of the agenda of, of all of society. So their priorities become our priorities. So if we don't speak and we remain on the sidelines, we, we give them the room to, to become uh, the main uh, you know, speakers of, of, uh, in, in the room and to have uh, their causes heard and to, to have their, their causes become priority. What about us? What about our, what we believe? What about our values, your values, my values? What we want to advance, the causes we want to advance. So should we stay on the sidelines and watch them advertise their matters and, and get all of the airtime? Because we don't get equal airtime. So we need to jump in the conversation, really, all of us, in order to have to shape the world according to our views and according to our dreams. 
especially for us women, there are many women in the room, I want to talk about this example of us women, we need to become thought leaders because there is too much at stake for us. We can just settle for, no, I'm not comfortable with speak, I'm not comfortable with taking the floor. Um, actually, we need to make our voices heard because we, you heard about the fertility talk, the importance of it. I, I, I was very inspired by that. And um, we need to have the world better fit our own situation, our worldview, our values, our own constraints as women. But that's one example. There are many other groups that need to be heard. So you see, thought leadership is not just a hobby. It's a matter of, of political importance and of social importance. The problem is not all of us manage to be heard the way we want to be. There are problems in sharing the, those issues. How do we communicate those ideas? Can we have the impact that we really want to have? It's difficult. I mean, sharing can be a challenge, really. We, we don't always have the experience and the communication skills to master that. When we appear in public, we do public speech. It's, 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 it, it, there are lots of difficulties. We can be shy, afraid. So many uh, times we, we just... Uh, say, no thanks, please get my colleague instead, I'm not the person to do this. And, but this is a mistake, because it is very important for us, and we can learn how to do it. How do we do it? I've been 25 years uh, as a reporter, like you, dear, so hi. <laughs> and we, uh, in, in journalism, we learned to, to be opinion leaders really because we write columns. And I've been doing lots of um, also opinion leadership on social networks for the last uh, 15 years. And this uh, made me uh, advise people, entrepreneurs, CEOs, on how to acquire communication skills. And uh, what I w would advise you is to acquire the sense of legitimacy and of confidence in your own message on what you need to say to, to the world. Because you have a life path that is unique. No one else saw what you saw, experienced what you experienced. What, you were the witness of things that no one else saw except you. You have a unique life path. We agree with that. So what you have to say, no one else has to say it. So you, you have a value in your message because it is a unique message and no one else knows it and knows what you know. That's one thing. The second thing is that you need to practice because having communication skills is like lifting weight. The more you do it, the better you get at it. So I would advise you to train first at home. I mean, in, if you're not a very experienced uh, communicator, start in front of the mirror. Record your voice in order to improve it and make it more impactful, film yourself, uh, start uh, to intervene at dinner tables, even on delicate topics, <laughs> submit issues to the discussion, to the debate, object sometimes and ask questions and see what happens. I mean, nothing problematic will happen besides a debate, a conversation, maybe a, 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 a tough debate, why not? Learn to be at ease with, you know, debating and confronting and discussing. Do the same at work during meetings. While you might say, no, I, I'd better not raise this topic, I'd better be silent. I mean, being a good listener is fantastic. We always praise the good listeners. They're fantastic. But this is not what is going to make you a thought leader. It is not enough in any case. So bring issues, uh, raise your hand, intervene in the conversation, uh, voice your own concerns uh, quietly with confidence, with a little dose of sufficient authority, because you know what you're dealing with. This is, you are in your job, you are a professional. Be confident in your right to voice concerns and to be at the table having your say in, in matters. This is where leadership really starts. Then, at every opportunity, accept to make speeches at ceremonies, at uh, corporate events. There are many corporate events nowadays. You can be in webinars, you can be a panelist, a moderator, and you can be a keynote speaker. This is the best exercise of all, because public speech is really what will train you. 
But we have only spoken about the form so far, the form and not the substance. And the substance is even more important. Substance is key. Content is everything. Corporations want to have content. They don't even speak about their products anymore. They want content, inspiring content. So do you. What is your content? Don't be so sure. It's not that obvious. Your head might be, you know, uh, confused with so many corporate messages, institutional ready-made thinking. Don't be inspired by standard thinking, never. Your views, your own struggles, your own aspirations, you're going to find them inside you. You're going to dig deep inside you in all of your experience and find the issues that matter most to you, that make you ready to fight find arguments in favor of, commit for, stand up for. What are those issues? What are those struggles? What are those aspirations? What would you like to see change? These are your issues that make you a thought leader. So start right away. I mean, this is your uh, impact. It, it lies here. Your treasure lies here. Now, am I a natural opinion leader? Not the least. I mean, quite the contrary. I was so shy when I was a child and a teenager that I refrained from breathing. Not like our two improvisers here. So I don't think they were shy ever. <laughs> I was so shy that my uh, professor at high school called me the Sphinx. Fortunately, <laughs> because I was so mute, you know, he was wondering. I mean, I had great, the best grades actually. It was a bit autistic, autistic, but. Uh, but I was called, uh, fortunately I'm Egyptian, so it was made sense to be called the Sphinx, but you know. <laughs> and then I was silent for years studying, very serious, very technical. I was in the financial news and work and work. And suddenly there is the 2008 crisis, the famous sub cr subprime crisis. Everyone knows what happened. People were in the streets without homes, especially in the US, but everywhere really Europe became impoverished, everything. I felt deep outrage. At that point, I felt I had things to say. I was boiling inside. It was contrary to all my values. I felt that I had ethical things that I needed to talk about and that could make a difference. So I took the pen and I started writing. I mean, I, on the computer and on the, the, the keyboard, you know. <laughs> that was easy. Writing is OK for me. I have no problem writing. But then it really threw me in the media, because when you write books and the books work, uh, are working and everyone reads them, they, they, they call you in the media and you become the interviewee. This time you are the one who is appearing and giving interviews and I had to appear. And so I really forced myself to do it because I had stage fright. I was afraid of the judgment of others. I was panicking. I was sweating. I was forgetting my words. I, I couldn't control my voice. I wasn't breathing at all again. I was, uh, you know, very nervous and it was really torture, but I was forcing myself. So what I'm telling you is practice, practice, practice. Because I went there, I did the exercise and I was improving with every exercise until it became, I would say, almost, not completely, but almost second nature. But then, it wasn't over. I, di I discovered something. The more you gain exposure, the more there is adversity. So you have contradictors along the road. If you want to get exposure, you have to be ready. It's a basic premise. So I got those contradictors. I had fights. I had haters, everything. You know? And I, I understood very quickly that if we don't accept to, be, to have more uh, contradictors, the more influence we have, we should really stop having be, be, uh, speak publicly. And I would really, really advise you and plead for you to not be deterred by this, because this is so little a price to pay for gaining influence. It's just a cue telling you, you have more influence. You have enemies, it means you have more influence. And a woman, especially a woman, has to learn to live with adversity. This is her biggest strength. She can't be intimidated, and you know that all the great women in history couldn't be intimidated or deterred. So what I'm telling you is that if you have things to say, start sharing. Find out those things you most believe in and those things you most want to see change. And start 
reaching out for those people who have the same dreams. If you become visible, actually, you'll create a network effect in which other people who have the same values as you will combine with you. And your power will be multiplied by this. And you will find that you have created a collective intelligence working in favor of the, for the causes that you most want to see achieved. And this is when we feel a, a feeling of achievement in life. When, when if we don't speak, we will feel unachieved, you know, and others are speaking, others are doing their, their, their advertising, we will feel unachieved. But if we do accomplish this, we will feel a great sense of connection, of global awareness that we have created and of global collective intelligence that will be really good for what we believe in. And the world will have a meaning this life will have more, will gain in meaning for us all. So to make a long story short, the world needs thought leaders. Will you be one of them? Thank you for your attention.